just a second here. Okay, it's now streaming live on Facebook. So, bonus. Um, well, anyway, good morning, Matthew. Good morning, Emily. Uh, morning. Welcome to another edition of Positive Vibes. I know you were here just a couple weeks ago, but you're back. Yay! And, uh, I'm excited to have you back. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, it's just exciting to have you back. Um, uh, let's see. And so I met you on, I forget, how did you get, how did you find me again? Oh gosh, probably on a Facebook page or something. Okay, was it, was it, do you remember if it was via running or via Gary V's video? I think it was probably running related, but I can't, okay. I feel like it's been years and I can't remember how many and uh, just a blur. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like three or four, it seems like, because I, yeah. I know we've been following each other on Instagram since pretty much almost since I, uh, since I started out on Instagram, and uh, which I actually didn't get started on Instagram until right before or right after I went to New York to uh, have my appointment, my day with Gary B at VaynerMedia. And, uh, you know, I figured, hey, if he's this big guru in social media and he's on Instagram, <laughs> and he's talking about it, I may as well do it, you know. So I went ahead and jumped on over to Instagram. But, okay. uh, yeah, at any rate, um, yeah, talking about running, man, my, my legs and my back, my lower back are killing me today. Fortunately, my neck and shoulders aren't so bad, but yesterday I uh, was over at my mom's having lunch and uh, we were done with lunch. She was in washing dishes and I happened to open, I opened my phone looking on Facebook and one of my local, one of my friends locally, he was, uh, he was in this friend group on Facebook anyway. He was running this trail, the Cushman Trail over in Gig Harbor, and he said, yeah, I got in 12 miles today. And I'm like, wow, that, that was, sounds cool, you know, and I haven't run that trail over there in a long time. So I, uh, so I immediately after lunch, you know, the full stomach and everything, immediately after right. lunch, I told my mom, okay, I'm going to, she's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to go running. And she's like, no, where are you going to go running? Well, I'm just going to go over the Narrows Bridge, maybe do a little bit of the Cushman Trail maybe just the bridge, who knows. I got to the other side of the Nar Tacoma Narrows Bridge over on the Gig Harbor side, and ended up running all the way into downtown Gig Harbor on the water and back for a total of, uh, well, it was actually 15 miles when I got back to my car, and I figured I can't stop on an even number, so I ran the half mile and ran back to my car for 16. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, yes, I, okay. I could hardly walk last night. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just like any anyway to the interview. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. I was going to do this little introduction <laughs> like I did last time, but I'll I'll do it again. Um, and I, I wish I wish I had your uh, I wish I had your uh, um, resume or whatever pulled up your map. That way I could do you know read yours too. But I'll just I'll read what I have for Emily. And this is off your website, emilymadonia.com, uh, on the About page. Violinist Emily Madonia holds a Bachelor of Music degree in Violin Performance from the Eastman School of Music, 2006, where she studied with Mikhail Kopelman and Svi Zeitlin. Since moving to Houston in 2016, Emily has performed with the Houston Grand Opera, Fox Society, VC Strings, Third Floor Music, and Richard Brown Music. Prior orchestral experience includes the Buffalo Philharmonic, Rochester Chamber Orchestra, Rochester Oratorio Society, Syracuse Symphony, Symphoria, Binghamton Philharmonic, Cayuga Chamber Orchestra, Columbus Symphony in Georgia, 
Laredo Philharmonic, Corpus Christi Symphony, Mid-Texas Symphony, and Victoria Symphony in Texas. Emily has performed extensively as a chamber musician with many groups, including Chord Ensemble, Marini String Ensemble, and the Cedar Valley Chamber Music Festival. As a soloist, Emily won the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony Orchestra Concerto Competition in 2002. She has also performed as a soloist with Jiva Theater, the Laredo Philharmonic, and the Laredo Philharmonic Youth Orchestra, and has given countless solo recitals throughout the country. Emily attended the Indiana University Summer String Academy in 1999 and 2000, Hot Springs Music Festival in 2002 and 2003, Academy of Music at Ramapo College in 2003, and Music Academy of the West in 2005. As a teacher, Emily has taught privately and coached chamber music at the Hochstein School of Music and Dance Hochstein School of Music and Dance in New York, the Eastman Community Music School in New York, and a home for the past 15 years. Emily teaches violin and viola lessons in a private studio at the Sugarland Arts Center and Gallery. When not performing or teaching, Emily is a busy mother to a boy and a girl, a wife, an actor, and an avid runner. And I don't know, it's, it's like, after reading that, I'm, and before reading that even, I'm totally honored to have you guys on my show. And I, I know that, uh, I know you said last time, how, how, how long have you guys been playing the violin? Since you were three, it was it? Both of us started when we were three years old, yeah. Yeah, three years old, man. That, that's an awful long time to be playing the instrument. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's no wonder both of you teach you know, teach music on the violin and the other instruments too. Um, and so, you know, I'm just wondering if you could tell me a little bit about, you know, your experience playing on the violin and or other instruments. Um, I guess I can start. So uh, I started playing I come from a musical family. Both of my parents are professional musicians. So um, growing up, I, that's what I thought everyone's families did. I didn't know that there were other jobs and other things you could do. And, and I always tell people, you know, when I went to kindergarten, I asked everybody, what instrument do you play? <laughs> and they just looked at me like I was crazy because I didn't know that that wasn't what everybody did. But um, I started because my brother started and he's a, a couple years older than me and I just wanted to be better than him because that's, I guess, the way I was when I was three. And he quit like the next year and then now he plays piano. So it's funny, he hardly did it, but um, that's what I decided to do for a living. And I mean, it's just a very, very big part of your life if you, if you go into being a professional musician from a very young age, you practice you know, hours every day, just for years and years and years. And you, you go and you try to play for every famous person you can to try to learn as much as you can. And you try to travel in the summer and study with different people and go to different festivals and camps. And it's just, it's impossible to do it without being completely obsessed with it pretty much and making it your whole life, which is why professional musicians are crazy. <laughs> and, uh, it's hard. You have to force yourself to learn other things, you know, because that's really all you think about for a long time. So um, it's not, it wasn't really until adulthood that I started exploring other things, you know, like acting and, and writing and, and just other things that I want to do as well. And the pandemic has actually helped with that since live performance has basically been eliminated. But yeah, it's an interesting life. Right. Yeah, that's, that would, yeah, if, if your parents are, if, if both your parents are professional musicians, then that, that leads, you know, a lot of, leads to a lot of influence as to, you know, great possibility as to what you're going to be doing, you know, and what you want to get into, you know, since you're always around it. 
Yeah. And uh, how 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 did you get uh, influenced into playing math? I uh, when I was in preschool, my teacher she was an amateur violinist, uh, Miss Cabellia. If you ever watched this, hello. And she brought her violin when we were studying the letter V. When we were learning the letter V, she brought her violin because it begins with the letter V. And the story is I didn't put it down. Everyone else, you know, watched her play. And then I would, I sat up in the front of the room and I would just hold it in my hand. And so by the end of the year, she got me this really tiny violin. And my dad and I started taking lessons together. And so that's that's how I started. And it was, it was great. Dad and I uh, played together for nearly 10 years. You know, and he was he was a lot better than me. And then uh, and then one day he he sort of said, I'm I'm going to stop playing. You know, this is you know, I'm, I'm working and you're you're now getting really good. And so it was probably like the it was it was a great day for me as a violinist, but like really, really hard for me to stop playing with my dad. It was it was very bittersweet. But ever since then, you know, it's it's the only thing that I've ever known to do. Like she said, it's when you do it, you you have to devote your life to it. So now you got to. We have to learn other things. We have to force ourselves to focus on, on other projects as well. Right on. And you, you both teach, Matt. Do you teach at uh, you teach at the local school, right? Yes, I'm a orchestra director for Ortiz Middle School in the Houston Independent School District. So go Golden Eagles. And it's wonderful, you know. It, I love it. private lessons are amazing, and then I also love getting getting the group of students and starting the beginners and and watching them then grow through through the, the, the middle school years. From uh, teaching them orchestra and learning about how to play together, it's a it's a very it's a very good experience. Right on, right on. Um, and so. You said through the middle school experience, how many how many years do you watch them play, or do you get to- Seventh and eighth grade. Just seventh and eighth? Uh, six and sixth grade, three years. Oh, six, six, seventh and eighth. Okay, so three years. So you get a, you get a, you know, a wide, sort of a three year spectrum of their progress. Right. Right on, right on. Um, and Emily, about, you know, it's like it says in your bio there that I read this morning, um, you've been teaching privately for 15 years? It's probably been about 15 years, yeah. Yeah. Thinking. I, that bio I wrote a few years ago, though, so. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Than that, I just haven't really been counting. <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah, you've been teaching for years, um, yeah. doing private lessons. Um, and typically, one question I had about that was typically your students, how, like, how long are your students with you typically, or, you know, just indefinitely, or? It depends. Um, I've moved so many times. Oh, okay, okay. So I've only been in Houston for, well, this will be year seven, right? Wait, five? <laughs> I think I'm in year five. I don't know. It's all a blur. So I've had private teaching studios in all the places I lived. Um, I went to school in Rochester, New York. So I started teaching there. And then I was teaching in Georgia and in Laredo, Texas and San Marcos, Texas. And so obviously every time I move, I can't bring my students with me. So um, some of them I've had pretty much since I started teaching in Houston. I mean, I get a lot of new ones and some of them graduate and, and it's just a, a variety of different types of people like I have adult students who are kind of off and on because they're doing it as a retirement hobby um but I do have ones that I start and I work with them and for years and we go through their whole progress which is amazing you know to start like a 